What's up, YouTube squad? It's your man, Olafome, a.k.a. Master ZX, a.k.a. You Know The Rest. Welcome to every new subscriber and welcome to those who've already been here. If you ain't sub, I know this video will provide some value for you to consider subscribing. Today, I'm bringing you my full Crusader guide video for Throne in Liberty. Disclaimer, I'm not Korean and neither did I play in Korea. This game has surprised me in how much it has captivated me and immersed me in its deeply fleshed world. From skills to gearing, in TNL, attention to detail is necessary for maximum performance. So let's get started with this guy. Like my build in previous games, this one also has a name. And the name of this build is called Lightroom. I'll be talking what skills I prioritize, what armor to wear, where to farm, and mistakes to avoid while progressing as a crusader. Now you must understand, this is not meta but a personal build and build path that got me into the top PvP and PvE rankings on various servers. Before I start, I want to thank my guild Merc for tons of advice and my homie Soul Assure, who's also a YouTuber slash streamer and currently one of the best players in North America. You should check him out. Link somewhere in the description or on the screen. Click, click, click. All right, let's begin. Crusader is the tank bruiser class in TNL, but by no means is the class low in damage or capability. After my short experience as the longbow dagger infiltrator class in the beta, I realize I prefer being more than a walking turret destined to be stun locked to death in PvP, so it's why I rolled Crusader for launch. When leveling a Crusader from 1 to 50, these are the skills I found most beneficial while leveling my character. I leveled up solo so I know this skill set works and will give you the best initial feel for the class because it gets better as you grow stronger. While leveling to 50 as a Crusader, gear isn't nearly as important but it's beneficial to maintain gear upgrades and putting your stat points into dexterity and perception. These are the rewards you should collect during your questing from 1 to 50 to help ease your gear in post 50 at different levels. Chapter 4, Sophia's Ring. Chapter 6, Visor of Resistance. And Chapter 10, Heroic Armor of Resistance. The PvE combo for leveling 1 to 50 goes like this. Pearson Strike into Willbreaker. These two skills will weaken the target and both skills are AOE. Using Annihilating Slash, Cruel Smite, Ice Tornado to clear mobs, and Frost Cleaving to finish the combo. Provoking Roar is also in this kit to help you keep aggro on bosses and mobs. Chain Hook and Strategic Rush are your gap closers in this kit. Da Vinci's Courage, Counter Barrier, and Stalwart Bastion are your support skills that should make you unkillable leveling 1 to 50. Also remember that Ice Tornado, Pearson Strike, and Cruel Smite are on short cooldown, so these are your bread and butter when it comes to just slashing on mobs. Okay. After reaching level 50, you want to reset your stats and start putting points into strength and breaking those thresholds. Optimally, getting to 50 is my standard. 50 strength, that is. 30 points into Perception, and I also put points into dexterity for that crit chance and bonus damage threshold but sometimes I might just instead of putting into dexterity just put all those points into strength for more health and defense but it's optional. Lightbringer PVX build once reached level 50 is this. I found this kit the most beneficial for PVE and situational PVP and I'll explain why for each skill. Starting with Shield Strike, which turns into Pearson Strike after you put the specialization. I like Pearson Strike because it's the bread and butter basically in every skill set in this Lightbringer um, guide. Uh, I like the aggro increase on it because in this skill set there won't be a provoking roar, so they won't be a taunt. So your skills are going to be what's going to be generating aggro. Um, next, I have Counter Barrier. I have counter barrier with the specialization of cooldown when a successful counter attack occurs. And then I have damage increase also as um, for 5% increase when the uh, barrier is active. Uh, lastly, I have Bastion upgraded with the movement speed increase and the focus on target increase. And this is different from the first skill set, the AoE leveling 1 of 50 skill set, this is for reasons that, you know, it will only benefit you really. 
this skill really only benefits you when you're increasing your um damage reduction the range of this skill to apply on your party is you they need to be fairly close so i mean if you're focused on your party then maybe take this off but if you're just playing by yourself and you want to be helpful to your party then you should probably put this on because it'll make you stronger and making your usefulness increase overall next in the great sword skill sets and specializations i have cruel smite and cruel smite actually is something that comes from brilliant valiant brawl um valiant brawl turns to cruel smite uh and then after that i have uh death blow specialized i have death blow specialized with charge and cooldown reduction and i chose the charge because as you get stronger you start getting more heavy attack chance and when you start getting heavy attack chance you want to be maximizing the damage on that and you know because you can literally one tap people with this i one tap people with this all the time so charge um next we have da vinci's courage da vinci's courage is upgraded with a uh, duration increase so this lasts a little longer with increased health and regen and then it also increases the recovery based on your base damage this is really just because the points are really cheap it's three points to add into this just put the points there you can substitute it to something else if you feel like it but i find it most helpful here next we have ice tornado which is comes from devastating tornado um this applies a bind after 10 hits 10 consecutive hits so this skill is actually pretty sick um you can see me using this in world bosses world guild v, guild v guild fights crazy world fights but mostly for mobbing i use this for mobbing it's a great pve skill it cooldowns low does great damage and it um it actually works well with frost cleaving i'll get into that in a second and you can increase your resistance while using this with the resistance increase specialization on here you don't have to use this you can switch this out to other things as well this is a cheap it's cheap though it's three points so you know up to you type thing <laughs> um next i have specialized will breaker will breaker is actually going to be your main taunt for this skill set this second skill set after level 50 you're not going to be using provoking roar so you're going to be using you're going to be using will breaker to gain aggro from bosses and mobs around you when you need it this skill is amazing it weakens targets it's an aoe skill um it maxes out target aggression you know you don't need taunt when you have that and it's only three points to add that so it's, it's lovely um next in the skill set that are specialized again i'm just talking about my specialized skills here i'm not talking about all the skills here we'll get into that in a second and how they're how they're used but um lastly here in this specialized skill set is guillotine blade this is the skill this is this is the one tap skill this is a skill that you know gets the job done so all the specializations i possibly can for this is on there um should max this out as soon as possible it's only level 13 right now i need to get it to 15 but things will be done i'm working on this video working on this video is taking some time yo oh god so yeah <laughs> make sure you like and subscribe but uh yeah now let's get into the actual skills i almost forgot to talk about frost cleaving frost cleaving works so well with ice tornado because in ice tornado after 10 stacks it binds the target um that's after you know getting 10 hits off the target and it swings 12 times once the target is binded you can actually use frost cleaving for extra damage because once the target is ice bound the target will take an extra over 100 plus 50 155 damage from the original 443 percent of base damage so you can see there it's going to be 576 percent increased damage if the target is affected by icebound which is pretty nice you have to you have to kind of like appreciate that combination there you know it's pretty nice if you get it off 
great for mobbing. The PvE combo for this skill set goes like this. Pearson Strike into Will Breaker. These two skills will weaken the targets and both skills are AoE. Use Cruel Smite and Ice Tornado to brush down targets, then use Frost Cleaving to maximize damage after. Devastating Smash is one of your gap closers but can be used as well to maximize damage from Guillotine Blade and Death Blow. Specialized Guillotine Blade is an AoE skill so properly using the skill will clear mobs with ease. Da Vinci's Courage, Counter Barrier, and Stalwart Bastion are your support skills, but unlike for leveling, it's stronger to use these skills before engaging the target. Oh, careful there. Nah, don't engage that. Don't engage that. Right here, get this. Dad's getting jumped. Too aware. Right. Oh, yes, we got the healer. Gotta get King's out here. You're getting Zerg by their tail. Careful. Yeah, get run out, back, run out, back, run get back. Out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Actual Zerg. I'll freeze if they engage. The situational PvP combo for this skill set goes like this Chain Hook or Devastating Smash to engage, then Death Blow immediately. Use Ice Tornado to stick on target as much as possible, and if the target disengages, Chain Hook or Devastating Smash should be available to use for you to use Guillotine Blade. Once Guillotine Blade has been used, Pearson Strike, Cruel Smite, and Will Breaker should go off. They're on relatively short cooldowns, and those are going to be the main skills that you're going to be using in situational PvP for this skill set. Now, with that said, this is my dedicated PvP build. These are the skills I find most beneficial for group and 1v1 PvP situations. This kit offers the ultimate offensive advantage as a frontline tank and a bruiser with the ability to execute. Now for some explanation for some of these skill specializations for my dedicated PvP build for the Lightbringer build. Here we start with Pearson Strike, which is Shield Strike naturally, but with specialization turns to Pearson Strike. We like Pearson Strike because it's the bread and butter of this class. I've said that in the last skill set, and I'm saying it again because it is. This just, Pearson Strike just makes it an AoE skill, and, you know, its natural effect is to weaken the target. 70, up to 70% chance to decrease magic melee and range hit. This is so, just so good in PvP. Bread and butter, low cooldown. We put this on number one. That's the one key. All right, next we have concentrated barrier now this isn't like the regular barrier counter barrier this is concentrated barrier concentrated barrier focuses more on just absorbing damage and releasing it i like this skill way more in pvp because it just it's just more helpful to me i don't see myself often um reusing counter barrier once i go in as a frontline tank i'm usually going in with the intention knowing that i'm probably gonna die but trying to take as much skill damage and skill cooldowns, absorb as much school, skill cooldowns as possible, CCing as many people as possible, executing as many low people as possible, stunning as many people as possible, shoving as many people away from my carries as possible. That's my job. So this type of stuff, these type of skills are what I use. This also increases your base damage when it's increased. Well, I mean, when it's uh, activated, pretty nice. And then next we have... <clears throat> stalwart bastion like uh i think in skill set two i also have it like this yes focus on a focus effect on target or focus on effect target i don't know why it's it's put is written like that it should be focus effect on target rather than focus on effect target but whatever this is just better to me than trying to make this a party skill because in pvp everyone's running around and you're not trying to like um shield everyone in your party and people can be far away so not maximizing the effectiveness of the skill on yourself is just doesn't make sense to me so um i would i just i just prefer this um another thing you can do is if not using this for damage reduction you can use this to increase your damage so there is great fury you can switch this to great fury Great Fury is cool sometimes, but like, I like taking damage more than like trying to do damage because this class is not the class that you're gonna try to do damage on. Like, you either are doing the damage or not, or taking damage. So it's like, 
Great Fury helps you try to do damage. So it's like you could do a lot of damage, but it's a chance. <laughs> it's a chance. You have nine seconds for that chance to happen, and it's a one minute and thirty second cooldown. I'd rather have damage reduction for you know that nine seconds than trying to do damage. You know what I mean? But anyway, that's that for sword. Switching over to great sword specializations here. <clears throat> First, we have Precision Dash. Yes, 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 Precision Dash. This is the first skill set that I actually have set Precision Dash in. I know everyone uses Precision Dash, but I only use it for PvP because that's the only place I see it really useful at. Everywhere else is just kind of annoying because, one, it has a huge range. So, yeah, you can dash really far. But, you know, like, that's it. You're dashing really far. You dash twice. You know, it's a damage skill. It gets you to the point of destination. You know, in PvE, you can just run there. In PvP, you can't just run there because the other person's running too. So you need something that's going to get you there faster than they can run. And Precision Dash will do that for you. And you get to them, you use Precision Dash, you stun them, you use your Death Blow, you use your Kill. Hold on, I'll get into that. But Precision Dash, you get the skill distance increase on there, increase range by 20%. That's it. Next, we have Stun and Blow. Stun and Blow, bow. But bread and butter for this freaking dedicated pvp build i swear to god like without this skill i didn't even know how important this skill is as you can see it's only level what's that nine <laughs> should be level 15 this skill the the higher level is the longer the range the longer the duration of the stun so <clears throat> yeah max this out this is important you want the skill do you want the cooldown reduction spec on this you want damage increase spec on this because it also gives damage skill damage boost 150 percent for the next skill which is nice if you use death blow or guillotine right after this um then you want hit chance increase so you you increase that chance of getting that stun off because you know people do have those stun you know those decreased stun rings you know trying to block stuns and shit <laughs> but um this uh effect duration increase stat i i think it, I don't think it's useful late game because you could just max this out and not have to deal with this. But I can see why you would need, you you could put points in this. But you have to understand it's seven points, seven points for one second, bro. Think about it. All right, moving on to the next one. <clears throat> we have death blow. Death blow. I have all the specs for this as well. Why? Because it's just better late game. I'm seeing that already with the heavy attack chance that I have. I'm hitting heavy attacks more, so like charging this gives me more damage basically but early i can see why you don't want to make it a charge because you could just keep popping this off the cooldown on this is really short it's less than 10 seconds you could just keep dropping those and then um i have the damage dealt to prone target spec on this because when i'm talking about the combos you'll understand but when you prone a target um this would be essential basically using death blow after you've prone the target is what you would want to do right so boom death blow damage increase on prone targets cooldown reduction charge it boom next we have frost cleaving max the skill out first because i was leveling so i thought it was so important and i love it so i have it maxed out um the spec on this is as you can see frost cleaving if not for fraud, if it wasn't this, it would turn to Gaia Crash. I do not like this skill because it just doesn't seem that it's just not that great in my opinion. I can see what it's for, but I mean maybe later in the game I'll see more purpose for it. But for now, Frost Cleaving is the way for me. Like again, I don't know if I said this in the video, but I will be updating this guide in the future as things update and progress. This is just for right now. We in patch 1.3 as of this video. <clears throat> Next, like I was saying in that combo thing I was saying earlier, Ascend and Slash. Ascend and Slash is what's going to make your target prone. After you stun a target, using Ascend and Slash will prone them. So the specializations I have for Ascend and Slash are skill damage boost of the skill used next within the next five seconds. Okay? And then I also have skill cooldown decrease by 15%. So as you can see, one using this precision dash stunning and then ascending slash proning them and then using death blow you could one you could basically one tap somebody okay 
So <clears throat> after that, I have um, Devastating Smash, which is another stun. This is another one of the stuns in this kit. Um, I have the specializations maxed out. I have the stun chance increase for this. And I also have stun duration increase for this as well. Why? Because when you level it up, it does not increase the stun duration. It just increases the stun rate and the damage done. So that's why I actually put duration on this one. Lastly, we have Guillotine Blade, my favorite skill used in every single build except the beginning build because it's useless there. Um, well, you're not even level 50 to even get the skill. So, But um, yeah, Guillotine Blade, I have all the specs on this. I have charge damage. You can read it yourself. You see that wall of text. I am not reading that. Cooldown reduction, AoE damage. Again, this skill is an AoE skill. So if you use it right, if you're lucky and you heavy attack chance twice and there's a group of squishy people next to you, bro, you could really AoE a whole group of people with one. <laughs> Could you imagine just landing a guillotine blade and killing like 10 people, bro? <laughs> like, it's doable, bro. It's doable. I love it. I love it. But yeah, that's the explanation for the skill specialization. Spe skill specializations for my dedicated PvP build. Now I'm going to show you the PvP combo. You always want to buff yourself before you engage in PvP. After buffing, use precision dash to gap close and stunning blow to start the CC lock. Immediately after stunning blow, use ascending slash to prone the target, and it only works on stunned targets. So once the target is prone, use death blow to execute, or use devastating smash to keep the target under crowd control, giving you the opening to use guillotine blade. With frost cleaving still available, this can be used to keep sustained damage in a battle, but when skills are on cooldown, maintaining frame is important. Remember to block and dodge skills from your opponent and to cycle the proper skills when the cooldowns are done. The Crusader is pretty straightforward. You're a tank, so the necessary stats will be the things meant to keep you alive. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, leveling 1 to 50, gearing isn't so important, but post 50 is when gearing will decide your strengths and weaknesses as a Crusader and Throne in Liberty. Gearing synergy is something I found to be extremely important as well as I was one of those who mixed the leather with play and cloth, which is a big no-no if you want to be a peak crusader. I will only talk about post 50 tier one gearing as I'm currently at 3K CP. So my experience in tier two is limited, but this will all be updated in a future video. My current gearing for T1 Crusader goes as this. For helmet, gloom guard winged helmet, or visor of resistance. Gloom Guard Helmet because it makes you extra beefy with the extra HP or Visor of Resistance because of its base evasion on the armor piece. For Chest, Gloom Guard Plate or Heroic Armor of Resistance. Gloom Guard Chest because it's cheap and it offers that extra beefiness with its HP or Heroic Armor of Resistance because of its base melee evasion stats. For Pants, Resolute Crusader Grease or Ebon Roar Grease. Resolute Crusader Grease because it's also cheap and offers extra evasion stats that other weapon pieces or armor pieces that I've seen do not have. This offers literal ranged evasion and melee evasion. It's pretty nice. Or the Ebon Roar Grease because of its higher defensive stats with base melee evasion stats and it's purple. It's pretty nice as well. <laughs> For hands, Gloom Guard Gloves or Gauntlets of Infernal Heralds. Gloom Guard Gloves because it offers that strength and Gauntlets of Infra Heralds because it offers extra stats including that strength as well. For feet, Gloom Guard Boots or Ebon Roar Sabatons. Gloom Guard Boots because it offers strength and melee endurance or Ebon Roar Sabatons because it offers perception and base melee evasion. For your cape, it's Night Slayer's Mantle supreme devotion or forsaken embrace night slayer's mantle because it's the most affordable of the three and has base melee evasion supreme devotion because it offers three generally useful stats and forsaken embrace offers health and damage reduction now for your accessories clasp of the conqueror for your necklace 
etched alabaster band for one of your rings and amber dimensional band for your second ring ancient sword doma bracers for your bracelet and belt of endless slaughter for your belt now um the items on the side are the viable substitutes that can be used until these rare or epic accessories can be obtained so don't feel bad now for your great sword you can use relentless cleaver broadsword of the resistance or the dead reckoning great sword these will work until you can get duke magnus warblade and for your sword and shield sword of striking or resonance blade will work until you can get carnix's nether blade now to make these weapons and armors stronger is trading to really expand the strength of this class is proper trading <laughs> you want to be using synergized gear so you can maximize thresholds for example iron armor allows for melee evasion and ranged evasion and leather offers ranged evasion and magic evasion it's better to focus on stats that strengthen you against your major threats so for t1 crusader you want these traits on your armor pieces you want melee evasion and ranged evasion and for the third it's optional for t1 either max health melee endurance or ranged endurance up to you for your great sword you want hit chance heavy attack chance and critical chance for your sword and shield you want heavy attack chance max health and hit chance for your necklace and rings you want max health skill damage boost and buff duration for bracers you want skill damage resistance mana regen and debuff duration reduction for your belt you want max health skill damage resistance and debuff duration reduction now for where to get this gear the main five dungeons you want to be farming as a crusader in t1 prioritize for gear in this order are depths abyss butcher's canyon tyrant's isle temple of slaughter and cave of destruction in that order the items in those dungeons are more important to your class to be obtained from in that dungeon in that order unless you're going to order are death's abyss butcher's canyon tyrant's isle temple of slaughter and cave of destruction in that order the items in those dungeons are more important to your class to be obtained from in that dungeon in that order unless you're gonna swipe those are the dungeons you should be doing <laughs> unless you're gonna swipe to get that weapon do these dungeons but as of today 10 23 2024 i have three video guides for three of those dungeons showing you how to win every time go check those out to help you get stronger faster but that's it for my guide today guys this was fun to make if you have any questions please leave them in the comments i'm reading and responding to everything as i said earlier in the video there will be an updated video released as more content for the game is released so no worries make sure you're subscribed to stay notified when i release a new video and yeah thanks for watching appreciate it peace